It takes a lot of loggers to keep Americans supplied with their lumber. About 3,000 companies employing more than 7,000 people in all. But in coastal Alaska, one of them, truck driver Nick Whitney, has a bit of a hill to climb. Oh. Literally. Is there anybody out there that can help me get up this hill? Can't quite make it on my own. I'm definitely losing some time here, waiting on a piece of equipment to get down here to pull me up the hill. But I just have to make up some time somewhere throughout today. And with a barge arriving this evening to collect a last minute order of construction lumber, Nick will need to start making up that time right now. Happily, this grader should have more than enough horsepower to help him out of his predicament. All right, I'm ready when you are. When we're doing this, you know, he's pulling on me, but I'm still driving. He's just helping the truck along because I can't get enough traction to get up this hill right here. With the hill cleared, Nick can finally get back to delivering his first load of logs. It's all downhill from here. The 16-mile commute may not sound like much, but when driving on roads this rough, it takes about half an hour to reach the lumber yard. There, after removing his cargo, a wheel loader gives Nick another helping hand. He's going to pick this trailer up. I'm going to back under him. He's going to set it down so that way we're not this long. And it adds a lot more traction, having all that weight over the tires to get around out here. Headed back empty. Everybody's working, working as hard as they can to make sure we can get this wood haul before we run out of time. Back at the yard, as the trucks keep coming, each load is bringing Papak Alaska logging a few tons closer to filling their last minute order. And once it's measured, marked, and tied into 30 ton bundles, each of them is hauled down to the water. The domain of boom boat operator Ram Quintana. He's the guy responsible for getting it all out to the barge. We're on an island, so you can't really get the logs out of the island without putting them through the water. So where I come in is I put all the sorts in the same raft, and I tow it out to storage. And once the barge comes, I'll tow it out to the barge. With the barge due to arrive in just six hours and 1,000 tons of additional lumber to prep before then, Ram's already running behind schedule. We have to finish our original order first, but it's going to be a long day because we got a few more that we got to push through. Ram starts building out a retaining area for the original order of timber, where he'll create a platform of bundles known, perhaps not surprisingly, as a raft. So what I'm doing is connecting four sticks. They're 66 feet long to make the rafts, and we use a chain to connect them all. I have to leave the raft open in order to put the bundles in, and then once all the bundles are in place, I'm able to close it off. Each raft can hold up to 20 bundles of logs that Ram has to bring over from the shoreline by, well, ramming them. So this boat pushes all the logs together. There's actually a 360 drive, and the propeller's right under the wheel, but it can turn on a dime. So as you can see, these logs float wherever they want to go. What you absolutely need is precision on where you hit the log and how hard you hit the log. So just like corralling livestock, I'm trying to contain them all into one pen. And just like livestock, corralling logs requires a good bit of rope work. This is a dog. And basically, it secures all of our bundles to the stiff leg, which is the anchor. Without these, we'd have a very messy raft. So what I'm doing is I put the anchor point on the, on the stiff leg, which is the first dog. And then I'll tighten it as straight and as tight as possible in order to keep all my uh, ducks in a row, if you will. With all the raft building excitement, Rams failed to notice that one of his wooden flock has gone astray. Oh, geez, there's a, it looks like there's a log loose. So I gotta get that. 
Time is definitely of the essence, and this is not what we need right now. While Ram goes after the loose log, back on dry land, cutter Trevor Killian is hard at work felling enough trees to fill his end of the last minute order, about 500 tons. Right in the bucket. But the near constant sawing is taking a toll on his equipment. The fact evidenced by the sawdust, it's started to throw. What I noticed in my last cut, my chain was getting dull. Instead of chips, it was throwing quite a bit of dust. And that's a good way to tell. You want big chips, no dust. I want my chain as sharp and as fast pulling as I could get it. Luckily, Trevor comes prepared for inevitabilities like these. I generally always have four chains with me. Having a dull chain is not an option. You gotta be productive and safe, and both those come with a sharp chain. Switching chains might not be that time intensive, but with this last minute order, every moment counts. Two, three minutes out of your day is quite a bit. That's another tree and several logs that you could have made. But it's gonna cut faster and we'll make up for it. Done, done. Let's get it. 